Welcome back to the Fish Tank right here on the Miami Dolphins Podcast Network. Seth Levitt, DJ Preach is in the back, and my main man, OJ McDuffie Juice. We are back in the Wingfield living room. Yes, sir, Big Seth. You know how excited I get, man. I'm, I'm ready to get it in, man. Uh, I love, uh, obviously, recording, but yeah. I love recording with, you know, my side of the ball. Oh, I know you, and we get another <laughs> offensive player in here. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> and especially, you know, we talk about this generation of player and the physicality of the sport. And even though you weren't the biggest guy in the world, you loved a good physical player. So what better way? Yeah, that's crazy though. You got to gotta, talk physical. Not, yeah, if you're not big, you got to be a little crazy, right? Yeah, I guess so. You're but not. then if you're a fullback, and we're going to get in all that, yeah. Alec Ingold, welcome to the fish tank, man. Thank you. It's good to be here. What what'd you call this living room? <laughs> the Wingfield living room. The Wingfield room. Yeah, living room. <laughs> okay. So the, the, the story behind that, aside from the fact that Travis absolutely loves it, right. is that uh, we weren't allowed in the building. We so, so Travis and the fish tank came on board at the exact same time. Okay. And we couldn't get in the building for a year. Right. COVID regulations and all that. And we Travis get, was building this whole place. Travis was building he the built whole place. Where we're sitting. This guy bled on the field. He's in the Walk of Fame. He couldn't get wow. in the building, and Travis could. So we called this. And the the first time they let us in the building, guess who our guest was? We had to interview Travis Wingfield. That was like the initiation <laughs> to be able to get That's in the it. building. That's there exactly right. That was the hazing, as they say. So yeah, man. But uh, really excited to be here. And to have an active player yeah. during the season, that's pretty cool stuff. Yeah, We're hanging really, out. Really, really, really cool stuff. So, obviously, man, congratulations on such an impressive start, you know, to the season, man. I know it's been, uh, you know, just obviously a lot of fun. Talk about how it feels to be a part of this offense, the way it's ascending, and, and being a major part of that <laughs> offense. Yeah. No, I think it's huge. Just being a part of, like, the chunk plays, I think – it's cool to be a part of an offense where there's so many different role players that are all like craving more, right? Like there's so many guys that can block, catch, do everything, right? Positionless football. To see guys step up and pick each other up when someone might not be having a great game, I think that's what's really cool to see is like, whoever it is, somebody is hungry and ready to step up. Yeah, you talk about a lot of those guys, a lot of weapons on the offensive side, but Mike McDaniel can see you absolutely one of those weapons as well, man. How does that feel when you got wide receiver, wide receiver, you know, the guys at the glory positions, but you're one of those weapons on this team. I think it's fun and it's, you take a little bit of pride with it. Like I love, I feel like I live in the details, right? I, I am there for one extra blade of grass for Raheem. I'm there for one extra second for Tua. I'm there for one more yard for, you know, Jalen or Tyreek run after the catch. And it's like, those little detail things, like that's something that I want to own. And like, I, I just, I love going into an install or a meeting and coach can put up like a clip that nobody knows about, nobody sees about, and he'll point it out in front of the guys. And it's like, I take pride in that and being able to kind of be in between those lines like that. Tua pulls it down, now flips it to outside. And that is Ingold, the fullback diving for the end zone. Touchdown. I love hearing Juice talk about you as one of those weapons. And uh, one, just because of all of the things that you bring to the game, but two, because of the position that you play. The fullback is in so many ways this dying position, yet here you are in this innovative offense and it's not, well, you do your share of, you know, we've seen it, Travis will be the first one to say, watch this blocked by Engel. But talk about being a member of this kind of dying breed. Yeah, I mean, you talk about a dying breed and it, you're able to reinvent your position, right? Like there's a few guys around the league that are able to be creative, like you're saying, and there's coaching points that you get brought up and it's like, you're creating football right now. You're, you're doing things that are groundbreaking for the fullback community, right? That you're, you're able to kind of step it up and you, you get to bring stuff to life. And I think that's what keeps you energized and ready to go. It's like your cup of coffee in the morning. Like you get excited to watch film and be like, okay, what are we gonna, what are we gonna learn today? What are we gonna get to do on practice field? And then showcase it on Sunday. You mentioned the fullback community. Mm. How, how big is that community? I mean, it's, like, you know, I see the tight ends now. They yeah, think they're all cool and the they tight have the tight end, end university yeah. and all that. Is that like five of you guys? Like, what, Yeah, what we kind of just, community? I mean, we just kind of text each other. It's a small group chat. Right, right. You know what I'm <laughs> There's like four guys on WhatsApp. Yeah, no, I think I literally have the best fullback jersey collection, like the little jersey swaps, yeah. and it's like, there's like 10. <laughs> it's like, that's it. Let's talk a little bit about how you actually became a fullback in this league. I mean, you were the Gatorade Wisconsin Player of the Year as a dual threat quarterback, like you talked about in high school. But then you get to the University of Wisconsin. We know how this works. You get to college, they, they bring you in a certain thing, and then all of a sudden, you know, you... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they are the plan. Yeah. It's the, the bait and switch type of deal yeah. a lot of times, right? You know what I mean? Um, 
and they'd move you around and finally settle on at fullback. Mm -hmm. You were the only fullback invited to combine. Mm -hmm. The draft comes around and you don't get drafted. Talk about that part. Yeah, I, that one still doesn't make sense to me. That whole college experience, you're a quarterback, you go to college, they say, we're going to give you an offer as an athlete. So you're taking that leap of faith. We're going to figure it out. Right. Go over to running back for that first year, um, played really well. Everyone got healthy from running back, and they're like, we're going to need you to move again to fullback. Oh. I was like, okay. Like, I, I see that. And it was a natural progression. I loved it. I loved the physicality of it. I loved uh, embracing the balance, the challenges, the details that we're talking about. Ended up on a high note. Invited to the combine. I was running around with Miles Gaskin. He was like the same combine group, and it was a new experience for me. And obviously, it, it, the whole draft process didn't work out the way I wanted to. But that just put a chip on my shoulder. It, it made me take ownership in showing people how much I love playing football. So when I got into a room or got into a building, like you might have overlooked me once, you might have overlooked me twice, that's cool. I'm going to show up every single day with everything to prove. Was it true that even before you got those, these opportunities now that you almost gave up on football and took a corporate gig? Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's that whole that pre-draft process deal we're talking about. Like, I was starting to get a feel like, okay, like this might not work out. And I took a job for, for Oracle. They offered me a job. I did my whole job interview, got my suit and tie on. Went to Oracle. I was like, yeah, I would love to do tech sales. You know, I'm, I think that would be, that, that's a passion of mine, right? Like, shoot. And um, no, it was, it was one of those things where they offered me the job. I was super grateful, super thankful yeah, to have right that in the back college. pocket. But I took that phone call so fast and being like, hey, I don't need that job anymore. I'm going to go play fullback yeah, in the NFL. Right. Like, I, that, yeah, I'm not done yet. It's cool. The, yeah. So, look, we could talk football all day, and you probably yes, do that yes. on all oh, the shows. No. See, Juice oh, wants okay. to do that. But this is the tank, man, so we do things a little bit differently. And I want to go back even further than, than, like, being a dual threat quarterback in high school, like, all the way to the beginning. You know, it doesn't take long to do the research, and it's well documented about your story and, and being adopted. You talked about having, like, the weight of the world on your shoulders at seven years old and, and struggling with your self-worth. And I, as a dad, I'm like, I can't imagine my kids feeling that way. So just just, just kind of tell us a little bit about that experience. Being adopted is like one of the, I mean, it's the best blessing I've ever had in my life. Like having two loving parents, a household that was stable, never moved my whole, my childhood. It was, it was amazing. And to be able to have a family that supports you, loves you, like I was taught all those lessons early on, right off the bat. The tough part was feeling like someone gave me up because I wasn't good enough for them. Mm or I was too big of a problem, or I was an issue, right? And like, that always sat deep with me. And that's something where, was it my fault that I'm adopted? No. But as a kid growing up, there's different times where you don't really, you don't really understand everything. You don't really get the whole picture, right? And I was just a, a big time perfectionist, always needed to get straight A's, always needed to win every game, always needed to like prove myself to other people. It's gotten me to where I'm at now. Like it, it keeps me hyper-focused to be the best I can. But at the same time, embracing all those feelings and emotions and like sharing that with a family that loves you, like that's what's purposeful in my life now because I can share that with a kid and I can look them in the eyes and know exactly what they're going through. And then showing them my family and how we interact and be like, it's gonna get better. Like all of these things, here's all the tips, tricks, whatever, like go have fun, be great, put a smile on your face, love in your heart, like all of those things. I think it's really cool to kind of connect to um, a population like that. Was there a point in your life where kind of the, you know, the light switch was flipped and you started to not kind of, whether it was blame yourself or internalize those things and you started to kind of just get comfortable in your own skin and understand that the world just doesn't always work the way you hoped it would? I mean, I, I fight with that every day, right. but having gone through it, having communicated with people, having talking with coaches, family members, having that support system, you're able to go through these changes and these challenges a whole lot better because you have that support system, because you've already talked about it, because we've already went over that bridge, so right. to speak. So you're able to deal with that battle easier and easier as life goes on. Wow. So obviously your, your personal experiences and you know, your upbringing really continue to shape the person that you are today. You know, and that, that's super impressive. One thing that impresses Seth and I more than anything is when young guys get it. Mm. You know what I mean? When they, they, when they give back and, and, and obviously and paying things forward, and from what I understand, you started, that all, all started when you were at Wisconsin. I think that was the first time you really have a platform where people are like, oh, like you, you get recognized, you, you're in the community, whatever. And understanding that impact of going to play catch with a kid at a school on an off day. Nah. 
and being like, oh, like this is, you're making a change here. Like they're actually talking about this. They'll actually write you a letter a month later. They might DM you on Instagram or Twitter or whatever and be like, hey, like I watched you this last week. Like it was cool to follow. Once the platform got elevated, once you go to the NFL, once you get that bigger platform, it's like how many more opportunities can I, can I maintain, right? Can we get that one-on-one -on -one with that one person and make sure that you, you spread positivity with your platform, but you also keep that, that individual one-on-one -on -one connection, that eye-to-eye, that -eye, the, the playing catch one-on-one. -on -one. I think those, all of those moments, you can't replace those. So tell us about the Engel Family Foundation. Tell us a little bit about the work that you've started. And then, you know, I kind of have a follow-up as to how uh, that transition, what that transition looks like as you change city. Yeah, the Ingold Family Foundation is really supporting those foster care kids uh, in the community, anyone that's been adopted, who's going through the adoption process. So I'm able to use that foundation, that vehicle. We just you know, founded it last, this last year and throw on some football camps. But then also, let's talk about financial literacy and some of those life skills. Let's give them a little bit of perspective, some character traits, some, some substance to whatever they're going to go back to, right? Help them write down a goal. Yeah. help them go chase it. It's, it's pretty cool. What's also kind of fascinating to me is, so when you're drafted, the team's in Oakland, right? Yeah. The, the, yeah. the Raiders. And then the team moves. Yeah. So you start, you're investing in community <laughs> A, yeah. and then the team moves and so, okay, cool. We're in Vegas. We're going to start doing some work right, in yeah. Vegas and you're doing some cool stuff. And then you move across the country. So talk about being in a new city and how do you take those same goals and passions and initiatives and kind of transfer them over to, to a new community that yeah. you're going to invest in. Uh, I'd love to hear how that works and just kind of what you're working on now. Yeah, I think the best metaphor I heard was like when I transferred, when I moved over to, to Miami, to South Florida, it was like you had this bank account built with your you know, Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee. You had all these things going on. You had the money mini camp. You had the football camp out in Vegas. And it's like none of that comes with you to South Florida. Right. Like it's kind of there. But like you learned how to build it. So now it's about learning from those lessons, the good, the bad, the pros, the cons, and we'll do it even better this time. And I feel like you can't get dis discouraged uh, about starting from square zero. I feel like you have to see that as an opportunity. Like let's figure out the people that we want to serve. Let's, let's talk with different groups out here. And, and I have lessons that I've learned and let's go make an impact for these kids. And I feel like that's where I really hit it off with Junior Achievement of Greater Miami out here and then also um, the Children Home Society of South Florida. From what we understand, uh, you're also being recognized for the work you've already done. Yeah, it's uh, spending the bye week Tuesday going up to DC, um, getting a congressional award. Uh, it's called wow. the Adoption Excellence Award. I think it gives some validity to the work we're doing. And I feel like that's, that's cool because you have a purpose, you have a vision, you have this whole plan of how you wanna help these kids out. And then you have organizations that are willing to recognize you, to bring you together with a bigger community, to connect you to a new network of people uh, so that you just can continue to, to do work and create new ideas and new opportunities for this new community. I think that's, that's what it's really all about, which is cool. Yeah. I want to get back to a little bit, little, little bit of football again right here. Um, you talked about a little bit. You know, you were coming off of, you know, coming into your own with the Raiders. But then, like, 10 games in, I think it's almost like, a year to the day mm -hmm. you have that ACL injury yeah I mean the biggest thing was like the amount of uncertainty that happened in the snap of a finger mm -hmm. and you you worry because you don't have you don't have another year on your contract like there's nothing else you can do the body of work was there you put that out it is what it is like I am what my tape says I am as a, as a football player and there's a moment of like deciding like how are you going to use this moment like, how are you going to respond? I can't control what happened on the field right now, but like, I can control how I respond to this moment. And understanding that, owning that, I still had a C on my chest. I still had a, a you know, a captaincy to, to fill out, finish out with the Raiders. I was like, okay, that priority list, I made it. I'm going to finish these priorities with the rest of the season. I'm going to get my surgery. I'm going to come back. I'm going to be in every team meeting. I'm going to help my replacement. I'm going to talk to all the guys the same way I was. Like, I'm going to be up in the coach's box helping. I was the assistant replay guy. Oh, wow. And it was like, that, that's what I was going to do. And that's, I was just going to finish it out as best I could. We're going to let the chips fall where they may. And it brought me here. And it's been one of the biggest blessings, man. Like, I can't even tell you. Wow, man. Sorry, right, Seth. We're going to 
Alan, we're going to introduce you to a segment of our show that we have, and it's going to be great because you're an offensive Should guy. Should be in his comfort zone. Right, in his comfort zone. But he's a fullback, so yeah, it's called the two-minute like drill. The you're probably, you're pro- I'm not in the two-minute <laughs> drill. But you're probably more in the four-minute drill. I am in the four-minute four minute drill. drill. Yeah. So, but we're going to give you time. a little two-minute drill action okay. right here. <laughs> it's really a bunch of rapid-fire questions, you know. We're going to get put two minutes on the clock with DJ Priest. And uh, whatever comes off the top of your head, man, this is Beautiful. how we roll. I'm a little, I'm a little nervous. I've, no, I said, yeah. like I said, I'm not a big two-minute drill guy. You're right, I get, I, I get it, I get it. I've got faith in you. Preach is on the clock. Here we go. First question: You were 22 in Optimus Ball, nine in high school, 45 in college, and with the Raiders, and now 30 here with the Dolphins. What is your favorite number that you've ever worn? 30. Easy. This is the current one, man. Yeah. Best, Stay that's in the, best the present. One. Yeah. Be I where like your feet it. are. I like right. it. All right. Who is your favorite fullback of all time? I, I mean, Mike Allstott, it's like, he's the GOAT, man. He's Big Mike. He's, he's a big time dude. Yeah. We won't tell Zonka. No, no I mean, <laughs> hey, it's he's a halfback. Different cat. Yeah. Generations, generations, I get it. <laughs> different cat. Okay. He wouldn't even, I mean, come on. Leave, leave, I got to share Larry enough. Zonka's hand, and that was yeah. one of the coolest moments yeah, of my life. Okay. So I'll put that one up there. Let, let, let's he do that. still has that presence. It's unbelievable. <laughs> All right, back in July, you held the first ever Battle for Wisconsin charity softball game. It was played by a host of former Badger greats, including your current teammate, Andrew Van Ginkle. We know Gink has great hair, but can he hit a softball? He's going to hate me for this. (laughs) Perfect. Not not the not the pure swing <laughs> okay but there's a lot of there's a lot of muscle behind it yeah, I, I, I believe that i believe that he's muscled it out did he cut bro. the sleeves off i feel like i feel like be... he deserves a sleeveless jersey okay for next got year. It. Yeah. <laughs> all right you're a green bay kid in your rookie season with the raiders you get to play a lambeau field what was that like for you and if you scored would you have done the Lambeau League? Oh, 100% <laughs> was going to do Lambeau League. I think 80% of that stadium was from my hometown. Right, oh, right. So they, okay. would, they would have gotten they me pushed you out. No, they, they would have taken care of me up there, no I, doubt. I saw something with your mom. She did an interview or whatever, and she's like, I think they said he's okay. Like, mom felt it was going to be all right. So I was hoping that that had happened, but uh, I love that. I love that mom had faith in the community. She had faith in the community. All right, clock is running. Coach McDaniel said he was proud of you after you scored your first touchdown. we get a timeout? You calling a time? I'm calling a timeout. I, I'll trust you. All right, look cool. at the clock. We get a timeout. Oh, man, this might be the four-minute drill. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> you're doing great. Here we go. It's on us. It's on go. us. Okay, so Coach said that he was proud of you after scoring your first rushing touchdown of your career, not necessarily because it was the first rushing touchdown of your career, but he loved the spike. Mm. He said something about the buoyancy of the ball yeah. and whatever. So what, was, what were you more proud of, getting in the end zone or that Coach liked the spike? Uh, definitely the spike. I think that's where – there was a little whistle, there was a play, there was some distractions, there's some adversity. Coach's things, adversity is opportunity, so I just took the opportunity to spike that. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> if you were required to use an end zone celebration instead of spike of one of your teammates, which would it be? All right, would it be Waddle's Waddle, Tyreek's backflip, or would it be Wilkins' worm, which you may not be familiar Anybody with, it? or I've... even Gasicki's gritty? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Be uh, careful. Wow. I answer this one. <laughs> This is a tough one. I'm going to do a full speed, like, s- cartwheel backflip if I could. He, like, he didn't even talk. Like, he just lay- laid out, didn't he? Laid out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like if I could do a backflip like that, I would take that, that one. Would that would be the one. That, that be is the two minute drill. I think you did great, man. I yeah, think we scored. We two we minute drill. Four. It was a four minute it drill. Was four minute. Wait till you see the ma- magic of editing in post. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be two minutes on, on the dot, man. Listen, I I think in preseason or whatever, or maybe even, I don't even know, we did a Twitter space, and when you signed, I'm like, man, I love fullbacks. I love that a fullback's back in the offense. I like fullbacks that don't brush their teeth and Mm. they're this, you know, like the old school. And and you have not been any of that, but this has been amazing. And I really have enjoyed uh, learning about your story, but even more so hearing it firsthand from you. And uh, I want to at least say, with the work that you are doing in the community and it looks like you're going to continue to do, please don't be shy and reaching out to us if, our, if the organization I represent or Juice's organization can help in any way. Appreciate it. We'll make an impact together, man. It's fun. That sounds like a plan. That's what's up right there. Thanks for diving in, Alec. Thanks for the time. We hope you enjoyed this episode on the Miami Dolphins YouTube channel. And if you want to catch the full audio podcast, you can dive in on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you do your podcast streaming.